We're trying out fuel pumps today. In this video, you're going to get to see the development of two products that I'm coming out with, and I'm trying to find out whether or not it's worth wasting any money on the pulsation effect of these pumps. Do I care that it pulsates? As long as it can generate some good heat, it might just be a mental thing, so I'm just going to run with it. What's going on, fellas? Today I'm working on a new product. This is called the Rocket Torch. Okay, you guys have all seen the Zeus Torch, which is a smaller version of this. The Zeus Torch is basically the same burner, but with a smaller inch and a half tube. This is two inch. This material is way too thin, but it was good enough for testing. Now, the premise of this test was to determine, can we make a handheld liquid fuel torch? Because we all know the problems involved with propane. There's a lot of them, especially if you're in cold weather conditions. So this is going on. Um, this is in itself is a new product that I'm going to be selling, but it's also going to be a part of another product called the Steam Axe. We've all seen the Steam Machete. Well, Brian and Rich have both got a hold of me at the, in the same week, ironically, about tar removal. Brian, out of Illinois, in the Peoria area, was kind enough to drop by and talk with me. And um, he uh, dropped off these tarred up artifacts here. This is uh, some type of squeegee covered in tar and this is some type of flap on their machinery for road work he purchased a steam machete but i told him i don't think it was industrious enough to uh make them any money removing tar it's just too small so we're amping it up a little bit here we're going to go with a 40 foot coil on the steam coil versus the 25 foot and we built a whole new burner in addition to that I'm experimenting with some different fuel pumps and power control schemes. And this pump right here is turning out to work just perfect. I want people to be able to take a little box, sit on the ground, stick a hose right into a diesel can on a job site, and then be able to fire up a torch. Previously, when we seen this thing running, it was on propane. The high cost of propane is one thing, but the plumbing and the pigtails and things that are needed to run one of these off of one or two tanks is, is pretty costly. Sometimes you have to run two tanks to get more than 50,000 watts out of a propane tank because your pressure just drops due to boil off. As the pressure drops inside that tank, the fuel in there boils. And anytime you have boiling, you're absorbing heat from the surroundings. It'll actually freeze the bottom of the propane tank and you'll lose pressure so you'll lose power that's one of the problems with the steam machete is that it runs on propane and the bottle just loses pressure after about 10 minutes of running at full blast because you got to run at full blast there's no regulators involved with um, running the steam machete or the steam axe so this is going to solve that problem um i wanted to see how bad the pulsation would affect the flame there is some pulsation in it but Today's test is to, is to determine whether or not it's really even a problem. Is it just a mental nuisance? Because I don't want to go throwing money at a problem that doesn't exist. I, I've got to keep it as cheap as possible. So great ideas aren't always affordable. So we're going to see how badly the pulsation effect really is. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this pump, for this speed controller, and for the transformer that I'm using to do this. So here's some good footage of the pulsation effect from that pump. The flame is very stable. When you lift it up and down, it doesn't go out like a siphon nozzle does. So I don't think it's worth spending an extra 20 bucks to stop that pulsation. It's, it's not really a big deal. It sounds weird. Definitely looks neat. But uh, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Just let it do its thing. I just wanted to see if this thing can get metal red hot. 
and it can definitely do that. This should be great for the monotube boiler that's going on the steam axe. I'm going to come up with some kind of better box system for the fuel setup and all that. The flame looks like it's stable enough. I do do some stabilization testing to see whether or not it's going to burn out on me. I think this thing's going to work out good on the steam axe. It's a very stable flame. Sometimes lift torch up and down is all it takes to make it go out when you're doing siphon nozzle burners and stuff like that or gravity fed. And so it's definitely passing the shake test, that's for sure. I mean, even a regular siphon nozzle burner could never do this because the elevation changes the fuel pressure and that usually changes the flame quite a bit. But in this particular case, there's no movement is going to knock this thing out like typical liquid fuel torches will do. That's why I haven't done it until now. So definitely glad I gave this particular pump a try. I don't think the pulsations are a big deal at all. You can barely tell. I mean, it's got a little bit of a weird effect to it, but it's not that big of a deal. I don't think it's worth an extra $20, $25 in hardware to keep it from doing that. We do get it up to 1200 degrees though. So it can get a lot hotter. I just don't have the patience to sit here and I shouldn't be doing this indoors anyway. But here's a quick look at the flow rate test I did and uh, we'll see what happens. So I decided I'm gonna have to do this test another way. Because we're not getting the vacuum effect, the Ventura of the um, nozzle itself is having a definite effect on the actual flow rate. So I would presume the flow rate's a little bit higher than what we're getting here, which comes out to right around 45,000 watts. That was not the highest setting available, but definitely one of the most efficient ones. So that's where I'm gonna call it on this one. And uh, I'm gonna do another test eventually to see if uh, I can get a different reading based on that Ventura effect. What I'll do is I'll put a hose right into a graduated cylinder and we'll just watch the fluid mm -hmm. being burned up so we get a more accurate reading next time. See, I'm gonna call that time. <laughs> 